Hello everybody, this is Manuel and today into this P-Series tutorial I would like to talk about digital blending and especially about luminosity masks. So I took this picture yesterday about, uh, I don't know, 7 or 8 o'clock in the evening. Uh, there was a nice sky, very dramatic. I was shooting from a dock, so the picture was moving up and down a bit. Well, not the picture, but the tripod I uh, set up uh, was set up on the dock, and the dock was moving. So I made three pictures on the aligned, and uh, so I could go ahead and use a HDR software, and uh, it would realign stuff and do the work for me and blend these three pictures together. But instead, I would like to work with the luminosity mask, take or the control over my workflow, and that way be a little bit more creative. So I'll show you how to do that today. First off, I'm in Lightroom right now. So what I'm gonna do with these photos first is I will uh, remove the chromatic aberration. If I scroll down the develop module, uh, you'll find the lens correction at the bottom. Open that, go to color, and then you'll be able to find this um, chromatic aberration. Now, I would look quick and let you know what I like about these photos. This one, I really like the sky, nothing else. Obviously, the building is dark. Now, on the other hand, if the building is dark like this, that create a very nice line to work with with the mask. So if you can have that black contrast, it is better. The middle exposure, I like the dock, I like the water, and I like these vessels here, the three vessels on the right. The building is too dark, the sky, eh, it's okay. But what I'm going to use mainly this exposure for is the three vessels, the water, and the dock. And then I have my plus two exposure, which I have the clipping. As you can tell here on the Instagram, I lost all, of, sorry, all the detail in the sky and some in the water. But I do like the details in the building. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use this photo for the detail in the building only. So what I can do here is maybe add a little bit of clarity, make this building pop a little bit more. With the middle exposure, my main exposure, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring those shadows up to match more or less what the uh, plus two exposure look like. And it's just for easing my uh, transition between the two. So I'll show you in a little bit here. But the shadows, if I change the shadows, it changed a bit on the dock. But the sky, the water, it barely changes. So that's why I'm using the shadow slider to do this. And not the all over, exp all around exposure, sorry. So why don't I only use that middle exposure? Well, because I retrieved a bit of information in darker area. There's lots of grain and noise versus the uh, well exposed photo. It's better, get more details, crisper. And this is the one I want to use. So now that I have these three, I will choose them all, right click, edit in, and then we're gonna go open as layer in Photoshop. Okay, so we're back here in uh, Photoshop and it is done. And I have my dark exposure on top, the middle one and the light one in the bottom, and I wanna keep them this way. This is the way I like to work. So I'm gonna choose the three photos and I will align them. So I can go to edit, auto align layers, and I like the auto mode, it does the job. So when I press OK, Photoshop will render and do its things. While this is happening, I will explain a few things to you about the masks. So I will be using uh, the Raya Pro panel created by Jimmy McIntyre. Uh, if you wanna check it out, there's a link right now. I uh, would highly suggest you guys look into this panel and buy this panel, the tutorial that comes with it to explain exactly how to use the whole thing. If not, you need to create your own mask or create your own actions um, to build the masks. And it is kind of time consuming and fairly complicated. And this video, I will not explain to you how to do this because uh, this video will go on and on and on. And this is a different topic for a different day. So I presume at this stage that you know what the masks are or that you want to go and get a panel like this one. And Jimmy McIntyre have an um, abbreviated version of this, which is free as well. So what we're going to do here is first we will go and choose the dark layer and create a 
masks. So uh, it's a hidden mask, so the top layer, nothing uh, is showing. So with the Raya Pro panel here, I will create all of those bright masks. So I will press this button. This is how easy it is. So you can either create the bright, the darks, or the midtones, or you could create them all, but I just go one at a time, depending on what I need. So what I mean by that is we're going to go to our channels. This is where you find your masks. So in the channels, you get the RGB, your red, green, and blue. And as you go down, now you have your bright one, bright two, so four, five, six. So see, when I click on that, something happens. So there's a lot of black that come and goes. So the whole idea be behind the mask is if I choose, let's say, bright one, it is gray, it is white, there's very little black in there. And let's say bright number four, it is all black except these little features over there. So the whole idea of bright four is everything which is, well, the mask in general, everything which is black like this won't be affected with my brush. Everything gray to white will be affected. So if I were to choose bright number three, for example, there's a nice definition between the building here, which is all black. So nothing will be affected, but the cloud over it would be affected. And all this sky here would be affected by the masks. So this is what I want to choose. Something which, where I want to paint, where I want to make the change is not black, but it's white, gray, or whatever color it is, right? So bright two in this instance, like there's too much detail in the windows here and not black. So I'm not going to choose that one. Bright 3 seems to be the one I want to use. So if I press Command and click on my mask here, this is how you make a selection, by the way. You press Command on the mask. So you can tell, like, all this is what's going to be affected by my brush, and the black won't be affected. So Bright 3 seems to be what I want to use. So I'm going to go back to my RGB channel, click on my mask, and then use a brush at 100% opacity, and I won't be doing too soft on that one. I'll go about like, I don't know, 70% or so, 60. And I will use a white foreground. And let me take a look here. So I'm going to remember everything was black in the building. So if I try to click on the building here, nothing happened. But if I go click in the sky, here it is. It is happening. So now I can paint over the building, over the sky, without having to worry about a fine collect like selection because you get all those masts of the vessels on the boats over there and then it's kind of hard to go around so you can do a second third fourth passage do whatever passage you got to do so you actually uh, create the dark um, bring back the dark sky sorry so I'm gonna do this a bunch of times here you can also click a bunch of times around like this and then until I find that my selection looks all right around the building. So what I'm doing here is I really focus on what's happening around the building. And I'll explain to you why in a second here. So basically, because my selection mainly happened, the transition between the building and everything else is what I'm worried about more than anything else. I'm not worried too much about the sky in the corner there because I'll be able to deal with it in a moment. So if I were to take these two out, See how nothing in the building has been affected, whatever brush movement I made. But then if I go around like this, I can really kind of like adjust whatever I'm doing. So this is the perks of the mask. So once I've done with this selection, I'm going to press Command D to deactivate the mask. And then what I can do here is I can just come around and then just whatever did not catch on too good just finish it this way. So if I go, let's say like this, I don't want to do that. So I'm just going to use the uh, top part of the image like this. Because the transition close to the building, I'm happy with that, right? So I'm going to keep it like this. So now I have my nice sky. If I want to, I can take the brush a little smaller size, but a little bit more softer and then come around here and then go a little closer to the building 
being very careful not to go on to the building. So just one of these things, just going to come around and paint and be careful about what you're doing. Okay. Now that we've done the sky, we're going to work on the building. But before we do that, because we're done with all these masks, we're going to delete them because these take quite a bit of space onto our uh, computer. So you can drag them around one by one or if you have the mm, nice Jimmy McIntyre panel, you can just press delete after you've done the day's mask and they are gone. So just to go back for a second here, I could create dark masks if I wanted to or the mid-tone. I'm just going to show you quick the difference just because we're on that topic here. So if I were to look for example what the dark 2 does, well whatever was dark now I can paint into. Whatever was super bright here uh, become a little bit obsolete but if I go to choose that, here we go. So if I were to make some changes in there I could mask these uh, and then whatever it's, it's, it's black won't be affected again whatever it's gray or white with would be so but I don't necessarily need to do this at this stage uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna delete these I'm gonna go back and I will create a uh, layer mask on my middle layer a hidden layer mask and what I'm gonna do here is I will reintroduce because at this point what I did is I took the building out of there right so what I'm gonna do here is uh, before I do that, let's just go on this mask here. Uh, choose my brush. Sorry, I need to go like this. Use my brush, and I'll make sure that the building is not selected with anything. So I will make my. Oh, sorry. I'm gonna make sure that this is not soft. So we're gonna go hard. Whoop, 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 whoop. Come back. Thank you. Then we're gonna make sure that all those details because sometimes it spills a little bit even if you look super dark sometimes it's not quite as dark as you think so we're gonna make sure that this is out of there so again zoom in do a good job at home I'm doing that very quickly here so here we go now I made sure that whatever was spilled over from our mask is gone so now we're gonna reintroduce the water because this is what we want to keep so with our brush, I'm going to soften that to maybe 70% or so. 75, here we go. I'm going to reintroduce what we took off with the mask here, the water, which I liked, and the vessels, like I was mentioning before. And then the sky here, which we want to bring back as well. So the reason why I use the, uh, the building and I kind of like soften the build uh, take the took the shadows of the building is when I spill into the photo like this there's not much a difference between these two layers right so what I can do is I can zoom in there and I'll let you know I'll show you what I mean so see how if I bring this there I was trying to reintroduce the sky in there and I kind of like if I do paint in there there's very little difference so I want to paint it out and then make sure that whatever changes that I do doesn't look too dramatic so that's why I took the shadows uh, out so basically reintroduce some uh, shadows in there so it looks a little kind of weird in these uh, little uh, windows on top so I'm just gonna reintroduce the uh, other one if it looks too weird and too fake again just try to take him out and do you know some painting reintroducing and, and taking it out so basically this is what our shot looked like. We created our own HDR with the luminosity masks. So this is how you do it. Um, so I like to work this way. I create a mask for my main sky. And then if I have to just change a few things, I make these two flatten like as close as I can together. And then just create my own mask and I play with it afterwards. So if I were to add a few things in there, maybe I would add a little bit of coloring in the water. Um, whatever I have to do and basically cropping the edge of this so I would definitely crop using the shift key and just like get rid of a bit of the the uh, oops sorry not this at all it's not what I want to do uh, just get rid of a bit of the side there which doesn't look too good and then whenever I feel like I would be happy this will be my result so 
hopefully uh, this helped. I know I didn't show you how to create the mask. Again, this is a different tutorial. I just wanted to show you how to use them and how easy it is to use them with the Raya Pro panel. So please feel free to like this video, uh, to comment. And again, this is how I mainly do my HDR picture now. I don't use Photomatix Pro as much anymore or um, any type of like HDR software. I just do my own using the Raya Pro panel. All right, so thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time. Bye.